Welcome to this edition of the Forum. I'm your host, Sheila Evans. Here on the Forum, we highlight interesting and important achievements, programs, and events within our school system and community. Today's show is no exception. We get our show started today by talking with Mary, Mary Brannock with Learning Perspectives Incorporated. She will tell us about their programs and the work they do in our community. Then, Kim Sincox, Museum Services Director with the Battleship North Carolina, stops in. There are a lot of good things happening at the Battleship this year, and she'll tell us all about them. And finally, we're joined by Ang Mangus, the Cape Fear Museum's Public Relations Specialist. She'll tell us what the museum has planned for 2016. It's another great edition of the Forum, so stick around. We'll get right back with our guests after this short break. In your new role, we help you help. Visit aarp.org slash caregiving for information on how to provide even better care for the person who wants to care of you. Every week we return all our cans and bottles. Yeah, we help to reduce the world's waste. But aluminum? It's like gold. Uh-huh. <laughs> There's a can. Where? Where? Get it. Environmental defense. Get green. For more tips, go to getgreen.com. Last month, I adjusted my thermostat a few degrees a day to lower my energy bill. Experts say that helps reduce air pollution. I say, cha-ching. Morning, Carl. Morning. Environmental defense. Get green. For more tips, go to getgreen.com. I am joined by Mary Brannock. She's the Director of Development for Learning Perspectives Incorporated. Mary, tell us a little bit about what Learning Perspectives does do. At Learning Perspectives, we really strive to make the community stronger. And how we do that is we work one-on-one um, -on -one with those who have developmental disabilities. We also provide behavioral mentoring. Um, but what we mainly do is we provide supported employment. And what that entails is that anyone who has um, any kind of barrier to working, we help them find valuable work. Okay. And who would your clients typically be? Our clients, are, there's a very wide net that's cast for okay. who receives services. Um, they can be anyone who's had any kind of um, mental illness that's receiving treatment, substance abuse that's receiving treatment, homelessness is a big one, high school students looking for their first job. Um, so there's very, there's a different cast of people who receive services. Okay. How do people get referred to you? Vocational rehabilitation, or VR as we call it. Mm -hmm. um, so what people need to do for that is they just need to call up the VR office here. It's off of Randall. Um, they call there, they make an appointment for an orientation, and then at orientation they're just informed about what VR does, what we do, and then at that point they'll pick their organization they want to work with, and hopefully it'll be LPI, um, and then we get them into job development and training for those specific skill sets that they'll need to have on the job. So the referral have to come from them? Yes, okay. they're all from vocational rehabilitation. So even if we had a viewer here that's a student in high school, they would reach out to them and then, okay. Absolutely. Very good. Who supports you? So luckily, we're so lucky in Wilmington because the community is great. Um, everyone's involved, everyone from, you know, businesses to nonprofits, some of the businesses offhand, um, you know, uh, Sam's Hot Dogs and they're great. Walmart, so we have everything from entry level positions to people who are looking to be teachers, environmental engineers, um, so we have a lot of different state programs as well. UNCW's been great, um, and Walmart, Kmart, uh, Food Line, all of those. Okay. How successful is the program? So this past year alone, we were able to place over 80 people into nice. valuable work. Yeah, it was, it was great. Um, so we were able to do that. And with 90 to 95% of those individuals working, they were able to retain their job after six months. So one of the great things is that we don't just stop when placing someone into a job. Um, we do a lot of external care. Sometimes it's just a phone call to say, you know, how was work today? We do a lot of conflict resolution and things like that too. Okay. Um, tell me what CRP is and how yours is different. So a CRP is a community resource program, okay. and what that entails is that, you know, what, what we do is that we're locally owned by local clinicians, so we're more able to help 
um, these individuals find work that, you know, we know what their likes are, we know what their dislikes are, we build a relationship with them as well as with the community and those businesses that are employing. Um, so that way we can better create a more symbiotic relationship. Good so, match. Exactly. Okay. Um, why should community members choose your organization to assist them with employment? So what we do is we really build that relationship up and we really want to get to know those people. Sometimes, you know, a lot of the high school students come, they don't know what they want to do. And so, you know, we do a lot of different trainings and things like that to help get them ready to understand, you know, what do you really want to do? What's going to be good for right now? What's going to be good for later? What's good for your future? Things like that. Okay. Is there a fee involved for any of your clients? No. It's all free. Everything's free through vocational rehabilitation, so it's state funded. Okay. Can you tell us a success story? Yeah. We have, we have these every day, which is so great. Um, you know, thinking off the top of my head, um, there's somebody that, that we had come, come to us who was homeless who had substance abuse issues, who was suicidal at one point. Mm -hmm. um, you know, he, we got him into the right treatment. He was able to become sober, find, you know, suitable housing, and he's still working now. So, and this happened over a year ago. So, and we keep up that long-term treatment too. Do you have to do a follow-up like a year later to see how they're doing? We or? always, yeah, we always, we have clients from six years ago that we still talk to on a regular basis. You know, um, it's really a relationship that you build and you want to foster that. So there's no ending necessarily. No, no ending. Okay. And um, how many people do you think you'll place this year? Gosh, what are I you hope hoping to, for? Well, well, I hope it's over over 86. That was this year. So I really hope that we're getting into the 90s. So okay. hoping for that. How do you get the word out to folks that this is what you do? We'll do a lot of outreach. So we'll go to different events at the schools, um, transition fairs, things like that. Okay. Um, vocational rehabilitation, they've been good at trying to get the word out, but we really want more people to know that these services are out there and available. Okay. And typically, what kind of high school students would it be that you were helping? Um, anyone who wants a job. So a lot of times there's the occupational preparation courses, so those individuals who really want to go straight into work. Right. Uh, or even somebody who's saying, hey, I, I need to work when I go through college. I don't know, you know, the first steps of working. What, how do I do an interview? How do I, you know, build my resume? Things like that. Or how do I resolve conflicts with coworkers um, thing, or employers? Same thing. Just, you know, different. So they get the referral, or do they go to uh, VR? They get the referral to go to you, and then what does it look like for a student? Do they come in and meet with you, tell you what they think they'd like to do, and then you assess what kind of training you think they need? Yeah, I think that the most important thing is to listen to them. Um, you know, if they say, hey, I really want to cut hair, I really want to do this, I want to do that. Um, you know, if they want to cut hair, then we'll get them set up with the right schools. Sometimes vocational rehabilitation can help with that as well. Um, you know, and it's just really, we're involved in the schools. We're in there all the time. Good. Um, we're also, you know, they can meet at our office. Sometimes we go to their homes. You know, it's just oh. whatever's suitable to them. Well, you can't go wrong. No. Anything else you'd like to share with us? I think that's all. Okay. Well, good work. Um, hopefully some folks will be reaching out to get your help. I hope so, too. We'll be back in a few minutes right after these messages. A little pop quiz for you about what me 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 what do i have a hard time keeping shut <laughs> name one team i played for and what is my nickname and now i got one for you do you know your kids principal's nickname know what really matters know about your kid's school and know about your kid find out 100 ways to know more do more I like to eat, eat, eat apples and bananas. I want to eat, eat, eat apples and bananas. I need to eat, eat, eat apples and bananas. Why can't I eat, eat, eat apples and bananas? One in five children struggles with hunger in America. Support the Feeding America nationwide network of food banks to help provide meals to those in need. Join us at feedingamerica.org. 
Kim Singcox is here. She is the Museum Services Director for the Battleship North Carolina. And she is here to talk to us about the events going on for 2016. Go. Well, I'm happy <laughs> to be here today. Good. We have a lot going on the ship for, you know, right now as well as for the new year. Mm -hmm. And um, one of the things we have coming up in January is our first hidden battleship. Now we do that twice a year, okay. so it's in January and October. This is a four and a half hour behind the scenes tour of the ship. So those oh. places that are more or less just like they were when the Navy, you know, decommissioned the ship in 1947 and so they haven't been repainted. We've, we've swept the dirt around a little bit, you know, tidied up, but still it's, people just love it because they can explore all these areas that you don't normally see. Right. Uh, that also makes, some of these things make great birthday presents or Valentine's presents. So Hidden Battleship is January the 9th, then in February we have Firepower. And that's a whole day basic on the guns and fire control systems. You know, I think that students will be amazed to know that all the guns used computers to aim and fire them. Hmm. They really did, mechanical analog computers. So we have a day-long program on that. In uh, March we have one called Power Plant, so that's on the, the engines. Uh, making electricity, making water. I mean, the ship did make her own fresh water and her own electricity. Uh, and may we have one on ship design for those would-be naval architects out there that <laughs> want to know what you know what went into the ship design to make sure that the ship wouldn't sink. There's enough room for everything, so that's a cool program. We also have some new things coming up for scouts, schools, and families. So the third Saturdays of January, February, March, and April, we're going to have Sailor Saturdays. Oh, okay. So that's from 11 to 3, okay. so families and scouts can come. There'll be volunteers throughout the ship with um, family-friendly activities. And then we're starting something new called Wonder Wednesdays. So there's five Wednesdays in April and March when schools come that they too will have uh, various volunteers throughout the ship helping them explore and do uh, fun activities and whatnot. And that's going to be uh, Wednesdays in five of the Wednesdays in March and April. So they'll come during the school days, like a field trip. During the trip. school day for nice. a field trip. So we're adding, so. That's fun. Most groups come on Thursdays and Fridays. It gets a little crazy. So we're trying to encourage people to come on Wednesdays when we'll have volunteers there to help you enjoy mm -hmm. the ship that much more. Um, we have in June, we have a two day legacy event because people may not know there are other North Carolinas. There was a North Carolina sailing ship from 1824 to 1867. Okay. And there was the armored cruiser who helped during World War One. It was the first ship to catapult launch an aircraft while underway. We have the submarine North Carolina and of course our North Carolina and even a Confederate ironclad North Carolina. Uh -oh. And so we have a two day event in June. We have wonderful artifacts from these older ships and, and veterans there from this that were on submarines. Anyway, so just a really cool event. You wouldn't believe all the World War One artifacts they'll be on display. They entirely oh. fill up the auditorium. It's fantastic. Oh, wow. So it's a two day event. And in the summer, we also have our Battleship 101 programs. And again, that's volunteers throughout the ship to help interpret the ship. I think a lot of people know about the Easter egg hunt. We do. And of course, we have Batty Battleship in October. And then we have our Very Merry Showboat, which is our Christmas activity. And we also have Battleship Alive, which is when the uh, fellas come, mostly men. We have some women. And they dress like the crew and help portray the crew as they would have been aboard the ship. So there's really, there's activities all the months of the year have something going on. Oh, and another cool thing is you can schedule what we call Behind the Hatch. Now that is a private tour for up to eight people and we okay. take you to anywhere you want to go on the ship and people can book those and that's becoming popular. And we also have military folks who are coming to help us scrub the deck and clean the ship along with our regular volunteers that do that also. So it's just really, it's a hop and join over there. <laughs> <laughs> and, and you were able to remember all of it without looking at notes. Well, it, we've been doing this for a while. Um, oh, I should mention it, Memorial Day. Okay. Because Memorial Day is huge. That's very popular. We usually have over 600 people attend Memorial Day, and that's on the fantail. Another thing people may not know, of course, is the ship is self-supporting. We have to earn our own revenue. Mm -hmm. And one of the fun ways of doing that is people have weddings and corporate parties and birthday parties. And corporations come and have their, you know, family-friendly activities mm -hmm. there. We also have naturalization ceremonies, and that's when oh. a lot of it's men and women in the armed services who are becoming citizens. Right. And so we have those, and they become citizens, and that's a very special 
uh, ceremony that takes place on the ship. So there's a lot of things, and filming, you know, we do films, people come and they do TV and, and filming over the ship, and that's another great revenue source, and it's a lot of fun. So, yeah. Do you still do movies on the battleship like you used to? We did those years ago. Okay. That My husband and I did that for 10 years, mm -hmm. and then Danielle Wallace did that for a year. And we don't do those anymore, but I still okay. run into people who miss the movie, so that was... That was something fun we did yes, I, I for did the it community. Once. I remember that. Yeah, those were a lot of fun. So we just enjoy offering the ship for the community. There's there's so much to see and do. And for those who don't think of her this way, she really is an engineering wonder in our own backyard. That's what okay. um, we were told by another firm in town. That And the engineering is amazing. It was also a floating city, and I call it a giant floating frat party because it's mostly it's really it's you know what I mean it's young men from the ages of 17 right. to probably in their early 20s right. far from home with uh, with no women folk around and they're just trying to make the best of it you oh, know yeah, have yeah. a good time and uh, Very good. and that's why I'm wearing the lay is just remember that they were in the South Pacific and of course I'm dressed like Christmas even though this is probably showing post Christmas we wish we hope everyone had happy hula days there you go and are looking forward to a wonderful new year here oh, in wonderful. Wilmington, where we're also blessed to live here. So. Amen. Well, thanks for coming in and giving us the whole year review. Whole and year. kudos to you for being able to do that without looking at notes. We'll be back in a few minutes, right after these messages. Mom, can I have a dollar? Yeah, that's right. I think my purse is upstairs on the bed. Moms everywhere are finding ways to keep kids active and healthy. Get ideas, get involved, get going at letsmove.gov. Oh my God! John! in the presence of others is not only inappropriate that is so foul it can be deadly passing gas releases a fog of carbon monoxide grandpa and other poisonous fumes that can contribute to asthma and pneumonia you're killing us over here kids shouldn't be exposed to secondhand smoke don't pass gas take it outside My guest is Amy Mangus, and she's the Public Relations Specialist with the Cape Fear Museum. And we're here today to talk about the 2015-16 Museum Programs and Exhibitions. Yes. Um, tell us about the new park. Yes, we just opened a new park in September. We actually tore up a parking lot and replaced it with a park. And it's open every day from dawn to dusk. It's free admission. But we're also using it for programming. We launched a new pre-K program in which we, um, it's called Little Explorers, and we hmm. invite families with pre-K kids to come to the park and explore and play. We have a different theme every week. It's Thursdays at 10 o'clock. And we work with the library, the New Hanover County Public Library, okay. to create our programming. And in May, we're going to do a fundraiser at the park. So we're going to start using it a lot more for programming and events. Might be a weird question, but what does the park look like? Are there picnic tables? Does it look like a traditional park? It's or? actually not a traditional park okay. in the sense that it's not a playground. It's okay. more of, we're t actually t an extension of the museum. So we're teaching people about the history and science and cultures of the Cape Fear outside. So we talk about native and non-native plants. We talk about water and how that is important to Wilmington's history. So it's also an exhibit space as well as a play space. Cool. See, not traditional. That's right. Um, tell us about some of the other exhibits. Well, in 2016, we're opening three new exhibits. In January, we're opening one called Making Music. We have more than 53,000 objects in our collection, and it's hard to display them all. So we create a theme and do a small portion of an sure. ex themed exhibit. And so music, Making Music will open and show a selection of our music-related objects. 
and one called, I'm going to have to read this, it's Pools, Patios, Pools, and the Invention of the American Backyard that opens in March. Sounds like fun. Yes, and it's going to actually talk about sort of the rise of the suburbs and the environmental movement as people were moving out of downtown into the suburbs, and then they started creating these backyard oasis and it's got a lot of really neat retro photos and advertisements and um, pop culture and how that influenced landscape designs. Okay. And lastly, in April, we're opening Starring Cape Fear, which is a film exhibit. And it's a local version of the really popular exhibit that was at the North Carolina Museum of History called um, Starring North Carolina. But we're going to talk about films and TV productions that were created in the Cape Fear region. And that will open in April. And we will also cover films and TV productions from the 1980s to the present day. And we'll have some hands-on interactives too. Oh, sounds like fun. Tell me about the museum's Mystery at the Museum program. Mystery at the Museum is an annual program we do. It's a family science program that we offer to teach kids and families mm -hmm. about STEM, so science, technology, engineering, and math. Gotcha. And um, this year it's January 23rd, okay. from 1 to 4 p.m., and we really encourage families to become detectives for the day and use biology, chemistry, and science, and math even, to solve a crime that happened at the museum. And it's a great time for families and kids to learn together and practice their STEM. So does everybody come at one time, or does everybody come in and get like, this is your your mystery, this is your mystery? Well, it's all the same work? mystery, and so okay. you can come at any time between one and four. It takes about an hour, hour and a half to solve the mystery. We okay. have a crime scene, and so we encourage everyone to visit the crime scene. They get a detective log. Everybody sure. gets a log so they can record their evidence and cool. kind of sketch out who the culprit is. Okay, very good. Do they find out who it they is? They do find out who it is, and most of the time they get it right, which yeah. is really exciting. Very fun. Yes. Um, tell us about some teacher workshops you have coming up in 2016. We do. We have three of those as well. Okay. Um, Project Learning Tree is February 19th, and that's open to um, pre-K through 8th grade educators. So it's a great opportunity to see our park, but also learn about environmental education and we're also, I'm going to read this one as well. February sure. 27th is When We Were British. It's called Mapping British Influence on Early America. That's a K-12 through digital project that explores the influence and impact of British history and culture on American, on the early roots of America. And then we have a Confidence in Astronomy teacher workshop April 30th. We're doing that in conjunction with UNC Wilmington's Center for Education in Science, Technology, Engineering, and Math, or CSTEM. They will practice setting up and taking down the Star Lab, which is a portable right. planetarium, and how to run the Star Show and using a solar telescope. And teachers can check out that equipment from UNCW. So we're just getting them comfortable with the technology so they can learn how to use it. So as far as the project learning tree being at the park, mm -hmm. is that the goal is for you know preschoolers or the younger kids to come in and, and learn about the plant life and such in your park? It is, and we're teaching educators how to do that and how oh, to use cool. our park in their classroom even, or how nice. to, they can come to the park and use it there, or they can use it in their own backyard or in their school. Okay, we covered the teacher workshops. Yes. What about some adult series maybe? We have some adult programs as well. Um, starting in January, we are offering a Created Equal film series through the National Endowment for Humanities. We're offering three movies at the library, and then in February, we're offering them at New Beginning Church. It's called Slavery by Another Name, The Loving Story, and Freedom Riders. So mm. these are some really powerful civil rights movement films that we think are important for the public to see. And that relates to um, some exhibits we have up now. One is called For All the World to See, and that closes January 7th. So coming up quick. And also we have one called Reflections in Black and White, which is talking about women Tonians and how they lived during the Jim Crow era. So the films relate to those exhibits. We also are doing a special behind the scenes tour, the Mystery of Women's History. That's a new program for us. We're offering that three times in March. Hmm. And we'll talk about local women who were influential in Wilmington and Cape Fear history. And we're also taking people to the basement so they can see our collection up front, which we don't normally do. Fun. And lastly, we're offering real science in June, June 23rd, as it relates to the starring Kate Fear film exhibit. And we're going to talk about how science is used in the movie and TV industry, for example, like 
you can use celery to make it sound like you're breaking a bone, for example. Oh. Yeah, so we're excited about that. <laughs> That's interesting. Yes. <laughs> well, lots of great stuff that you just told us. Um, tell us where viewers can find more information. The best place to go is our website. It's okay. katefearmuseum.com. Easy. And we are also on Instagram, Facebook, and Twitter. Very good. Well, thanks for coming in, Amy. Thanks for and having me. I'll be me. back in a few minutes, just right after these messages. A full life measured in seats starts with the right ones early on. Car crashes are the number one killer of children 1 through 13. Learn how to prevent deaths and injuries by using the right car seat for your child's age and size. And people, your passport to the world. The Arab Republic of Egypt is located in northeastern Africa and is the second most populous country on the continent. Egypt's chief agricultural products are cotton, rice, corn, beans, fruit, and water buffalo. Industries include food processing, tourism, and chemical production. The capital is Cairo, and Arabic is the official language. This has been Lands and People, your passport to the world. We hope you've enjoyed our program today. If you would like more information about Learning Perspectives Incorporated, you can contact Mary Brannock at 252-269-0971. For more information on the Battleship North Carolina, you can visit their website at www.battleshipnc.com. And to find out more about the Cape Fear Museum, you can visit their website at capefearmuseum.com or call them at 798 4370. Now, if you ever have any questions about the topics discussed here on our show today, please call the school system's public relations office at 254-4180 or check out the school system's website at www.nhcs.net. I'm Sheila Evans and thanks for joining me today. <laughs>